Now, this is quite an interesting topic of the role of LH in follicular genesis. And the reason why I want to talk about it is it is one is it is slightly difficult as a concept to understand and has led to so many interventions that we have put a question mark on uh, on some interventions that we do. So what we do know is that the LH plays an important role in the last stages of follicle genesis. And we know, know, the, know that mainly when a follicles reach more than 14 millimeter. And that, that's when LH tends to have a better impact. Now, if you look at the LH effect, the theca interstitial cell layer uh, produces androgen, which for granulose, granulosa cells becomes a substrate for follicular estrogen synthesis. So that forms a basis of a two cell, two gonadotrophin theory. At the granulosa cell level, there's a fine tuning that occurs with a cooperation between FSH, LH, and LH causes follicular modeling. Now, what we do know is that we have realized that newer, newer experiments have told us that there's some degree of granitrophin sensitivity, and that's very early. And we also started understanding that LH receptors are moderately expressed in even small follicles. So the best way to describe this is through this paper where we look at it from a hypothalamic amenorrhea point of view, and that's where you can, you know that there's deficiency of LH, and by replacing that, you'll be able to then look at how LH plays a part in follicular genesis. Now, 30% of secondary amenorrhea are uh, hypothalamic amenorrhea, and I'll be doing a short talk on the various forms of uh, of amenorrhea. Uh, the hypothalamic amenorrhea could be due to genetic eating disorders, weight loss, and other endocrine factors. That's the only uh, hypothalamic amenorrhea is the only amenorrhea where women may have a normal FSH, low LH and multicystic ovaries, often confused to polycystic ovaries. Now, in some cases, the follicles are very small and they're more difficult to stimulate. So what is the first treatment? The first treatment is ovulation induction. And if ovulation induction fails, then IVF is the next option. And a challenge with IVF is that the follicles are so small that they may not respond. So this uh, paper gives two examples. One is of a 24-year-old lady with uh, hypothalamic amenorrhea. In the first cycle, they give 450 of 300 of FSH and HMG, uh, or sorry, a recombinant LH, two follicles, and day three transfer was done, and this was negative. So what they decided is they gave an extended LH protocol of 150 of recombinant LH alternate day for two months. And they saw a significant change in the uh, AFC and the antral follicle count and the AMH. And 12 follicles were seen on 300, two blastocysts were obtained and says lady fell pregnant. Now, in the second case, they had in a lady with a very low AMH uh, and AFC. So rather than start the stimulation, they gave recombinant LH at 187 uh, every day for 35 days. Uh, and uh, the AMH at rose to 1.6 nanogram. 12 days of stimulation and one blastocyst was formed with three follicles. So if you look at both these studies, and if you look at the summary, uh, what you're seeing is that by giving LH, you are seeing a, a change in uh, the follicle numbers, a change in the AMH, a good indication that follicular genesis is uh, happening. So what have we done? We've said over the years, let's give androgens uh, and to improve the ovarian reserve. And our androgen receptors are also seen very uh, early in stage of follicular development. And as the follicle develops, the expression of androgen receptors decreases. Now, if the decrease is phenomenally low, then USAD quality is affected. So what have we done? We have given testosterone pretreatment to activate the follicles and start the progression of follicles. 
And to some extent, DHA works that way. It's giving androgen so that the pool of non-growing follicles starts getting activated and they start growing. So why can't you use androgens here? One is because androgens have a potent inhibitory effect on gonadotrophin release, especially of LH, resulting in pituitary inhibitions. Administration of exogenous androgens does not, in fact, lead to increase of androgens inside the ovary and the follicles. If you look at this, then LH is a, a better at activating androgen synthesis and, in ovarian follicles as well as granulosa cells. So that is probably how LH probably scores about giving androgens or even giving stuff like DHEA. But there's no evidence that LH receptors are available in primordial follicles. We now know that preantral follicles of less than one millimeter with only three to four layers of granulosa cells surrounding it show some degree of expression of LH receptors. Small follicles with one to two cell layer also grew less in the LH cell environment. So even at such early stage, adding LH does improve growth. So when you see cases when there is a very long and severe pituitary suppression, when AMH levels are low, when there is hypothalamic amenorrhea, these are difficult to treat. And then using LH may play a role and may help. Also remember, I'd given an earlier talk and where I had treated a case, not with LH, but with HCG. And uh, what we'd done is we'd used one pen of Ovitrol, 6,000 uh, 500 and we'd given I think five clicks of HCG rather than going up to 250 five clicks of HCG every day uh, and that's we continued for a month and uh, we noticed a change in follicular growth so what it is telling us is that in these cases where you see a very small number of follicles where you see uh, there is hypothalamic amenorrhea there is chronic LH deficiency in those cases, LH supplementation, or as I did, giving Ovitrol over a period of time, may help in, in initiating the recruitment of follicles. And that's an important lesson that we learned from.